All right. So again, this is the other MMO coming out, boys. Um, perhaps you've seen a little bit of gameplay on this. I was not impressed, but we'll see what Canon has to say. And a lot of people actually don't know what this game has to offer. So rather than speculate based off of rumor, in this video, I'm going to be breaking it down for you because we actually know a lot about the game already. Now, I'm not going to start this video by boring you with the obvious details about it being an open world MMO that looks gorgeous, developed by NCSoft, running on Unreal Engine 4. Instead, we're going to get right into the details. First, you can expect Throne in Liberty to be an endgame focused MMO with a relatively fast leveling experience. After removing all autoplay functions, they've sped up the leveling speed to max. People were saying that this game looks better than BDO. I don't really feel like it looks better than this BDO. level to where casual players can hit cap. Okay, there it kind of does look a little better. But like there's less going on here. So like I guess I would say equivalent. Somewhere around 50 to 60 hours or more committed players realistically hitting it around the three day mark. You'll progress to the end game by completing your main story quest line along with participating in world events and completing contracts. We're going to get into these individually, but just know that the leveling process here okay. is a bit more random and dynamic due to the nature of randomly timed world events being a bit. I think that's probably good, right? I think like just having like multiple ways to level your character is probably a good thing big part of your experience gain your performance in these events will determine how much experience you get there are also no i will say that this world boss looks like a loot pinata this looks like our loot but our world but every world boss in every mmo is just hit it until it dies there's no real mechanics that you have to do just kill it and that's just so boring your performance in these events world will bosses. determine how much experience you get there are also no side quests in throne and liberty you do have blue quests however which are specifically for your codex completion think of this as adventure tome in lost ark or just general achievement slash map completion like content in other games okay. aside from this leveling and progressing to the end game in a group or a guild is also significantly faster which brings us to the next section. Projected end game in your day-to-day -day experience. A defining characteristic of Throne is that this is a very guild-oriented, party-based game. The That's a win, right? That's good. We like that. Core of this game is clearly designed around group play. The fact that you can't even buy mana pots unless you're in a guild, unless they patch that, of course, should be a great indicator of it. Leveling. I wish BDO forced you into a guild more. Even if you're not forcing into party play, I wish it forced you to join a guild. Speed, gear progression. Ah, uh, you can solo play, sure, but like being in a guild at least allows you to join a community. You can still play on your own solo, but like you're still involved in the community. You have a much higher chance of staying with the game then dungeons pvp yeah you don't need to force people into parties but like guilds are something that i think is fundamental to mmos is communities and forcing people to kind of invest in the community a little bit even if they don't necessarily want to up front helps people stay with the game long term even if they don't ever join discord or necessarily interact in voice it's still kind of a good thing everything will just be better and more efficient if you're in a group guilds play a huge role in throne and can be argued that the not all of us. I am a solo player and I'm aware of trying the game. It should be close to equal for force for both sides. Well, no, like I said, you can join like force players to join a guild, but they don't have to necessarily interact. You can still play solo if you want to, but you still have the guild there if you need to do the party content or you want to do the party content. But forcing people into the guild, you'll have fun accidentally. Even if you don't ever play in a party with them, you might have fun accidentally watching other people get enhancements or do do other things like like making friends can be fun i promise game actually revolves around it joining a guild is extremely important as content and progression will be tied to it to a certain degree by being in one you'll have access to guild bosses which are very significant pots buffs open world guild Whoa, events okay and that was really cool did you see that probably turn guild into bosses which are very significant air. pots buffs open I wish we had a druid in BDO, bro. World I need I guild want, events oh, and of course dude. gear upgrades. One final note on the guilds: all members will have all of their performance stats shown, meaning people will be able to see exactly how much guild contribution you have, and even your total kills and deaths. Guild contribution, by the way, being the metric that defines the guild rankings on the server. This is gained through completing guild quests, participating in guild events, and donations. So, what are we doing? 
on a day-to-day -day basis. So they really hammer the guild focus home here. They're really forcing you to interact with with other players. Like this is this is kind of the opposite of video. I I like that. To be honest, I like being forced to interact and like meet new people and be involved in a community. But I'm an extrovert, so like some people might not like that very much. So that's gonna drive a lot of people away. Probably a lot of the BDO player base. Well, you'll essentially be doing one of the following daily contracts, codex completion, dungeons, or world events. Starting with the contracts, these are the dailies of thrown in. Shape shifting sucks. You only see a bunch of cats running around in the game. I mean, we'll see. It's just cat girls. It is what it is. Liberty. These will usually take you roughly around one to two hours, depending on you and your group efficiency. These are very straightforward, objective based missions that will have you venture out and kill X amount of mobs, for example. Okay, they're quests. They're just quests. The, they're Jatina boys. It's just Jatina. You are limited to how many you can do per day. Yeah. And you can unlock more as you level up. Codex completion is next, and it's broken down into three different parts adventure, exploration, and collection. The Codex is essentially your achievements mission book that will give you one time rewards for completing quests and objectives. Dungeons will also be a big okay. part of Throne. The six man instance. We have this too. It's just that BDO always introduces it as a quest line, and it's really annoying. Uh, but we have the adventurer pass thing too. Dungeons are supposedly pretty juiced, but currently we don't have that much info on them outside of everything that was showcased recently. The open world dungeon, however, is a different beast. This place will have different floors with a bunch of mobs and bosses filling it. You'll be rewarded with additional drop rate, experience, and gold. These dungeons are open 24 seven, and you cannot enter during in-game evening hours. If you're already in the dungeon, however, you can stay there through the night. You will not be able to stay in wait what did that say at the bottom you can enter at any time pvp is enabled during the night in game oh my god bro imagine pve servers all the time in bdo and then night kicks and the mobs get stronger and suddenly everyone can pvp you no karma loss yo the, i would the, bro, get back to the safe zone run boys already in the dungeon however you can't stay there through the night you will not be able to stay in this dungeon permanently though because you will consume what's called it is a cool concept it's really cool abyss points when you're inside these points are accumulated by doing activities outside the open world dungeon and does have a cap of 10k look how basic the the like look how basic this looks you know like, I don't feel like the combat really looks super involved. You're just standing there, hitting the mobs, and there's nothing to it. It looks like World of Warcraft combat with video graphics. This system works very similar to Agris in Black Desert. Lastly, we have world events, which make up a lot of the content in Throne and Liberty. When opening the map, you'll see a daily schedule that consists of all the events on the day, very okay. similar to Lost Ark's world events. These events take place every hour. This is so cool. If we could get this in BDO, I would sell one of my testicles to Jay for it. I'm not even joking. If I could just morph into a bird instead of flying around on like a... Uh, like a like a horse man i would actually just ah oh, dude there is no length or and are a mix actually there is a number of inches that i would give him sure between pve pvp and gvg content these modes are dynamic meaning some events can be pvp one time and pve the next usually the pvp and pve events are fairly evenly split and these events do give out some <laughs> Jay, I've come to bargain. That's right. Significant rewards. I could tell you that in the end game, you could expect at least anywhere from two to six events going on every hour. These events are performance based, which means if you show up and you hard carry, you're going to be rewarded for it. And those rewards also can extend to just like world bosses in BDO. I don't know, man. It's like whatever. I don't really like the, the world events strike me as like the public, um, Public events in Destiny 2, and those those were like so lame. Like, dude, those are so boring. To your guild as well. These events are locked behind. Are you thinking about trying this blue? Yeah, I really do kind of want to try it when it comes to the West, but like I'm skeptical. I mean, it, honestly, it looks better than the, um, uh, it looks better than uh, the day before. Server progression, however. So your server. But that bar is James Cameron in the ocean levels of low. <laughs> okay.
So that's... we'll have to collectively progress in order to unlock more events for that server. And yes, there are cross server competitions. Node Wars CG. Okay. Oh. and tax delivery are three special events that also fall under this category. Node Wars, also referred to as Boonstone or Riftstone events, happen every six to 12 hours or so and is an open world GVG event. Without this is what I was asking for in BDO like a year ago. I was like, give us like, like a faction system and then have events spawn in the world and then whatever faction wins that open world event gets like a drop buff for their faction for the next you know x amount of time or something how fucking cool would that be right like that would be so sick like instead of giving us these garbage node war changes just give us factions and then events like open world pvp events like this would be so sick going into too much detail the objective here is to essentially grab a flag and hold a point for roughly half an hour or so competing against other guilds in the process winning the node will give your guild a variety of buffs which include experience rates drop rates and even sheet stats siege is exactly what you'd assume it to be sieges take place every two weeks and it's essentially the castle occupying guild versus every other guild guilds that occupy the castle yeah but that looks way cooler than our siege Yo, look at that. the castle occupying guild versus every Where are our giant rock other golems? Guild. That's guild way cooler. I think the big thing that BDO siege is missing is destroyable walls. I wish we could siege the walls with catapults and knock down like portions of the castle and like open them up that we didn't have to go through the gate. You know what I mean? I don't know if that's possible given their engine, but like Guilds that occupy the castle will collect rewards and taxes, which even include Lucent, the premium currency. By occupying the castle- They're giving you pearls for winning Siege? There's a concept, bro. We would do- Oh, yo. Think how competitive Siege would get if they gave like a thousand pearls to everybody that won Siege, bro. Castle, you'll also be granted the ability- <laughs> Show, na Show Nation is getting paid. Getting paid. Right there. Look, there's dead GG. That's Roots right there, boys. There he goes. Ability ...to escort taxes in another weekly to bi-weekly event called Tax Delivery. Tax Delivery is another event where the current castle-owning guild attempts to escort taxes to its castle via a giant golem. The we have this, but it's called Tax Cart. It happens on Saturday before Siege about... Three hours before siege, tax guard happens. Like it's 5 p.m. Central. Might be 6 p.m. Central. But basically all of the taxes that are collected in Balanos are transported to Calpheon via a cart. If you hit the cart, you get some money. Uh, you can make billions off of that tax cart. But understand that when you hit the cart, it flags you for PvP. And anyone can hit you. 6 p.m. Sorry, 6 p.m. Central. But it flags you for PvP. Okay, so I'll actually show you the where the cart goes. The card starts over here. All right, so I'm going to draw on the screen to show you guys the path of the card. So it starts in Velia, and it kind of goes along here. Wait. It goes through Western Guard Camp, so hold on. It starts here, and it like comes up, and then it comes across. Not the exact route, but it like comes down. Kind of goes past Olvia, like this, then comes around... Uh, I know it goes across Elder's Bridge. So it probably comes... I think it comes down here. And then it comes in here. Anyway, it takes this big convoluted route um, to get to Calpheon. And the more you hit it, the more money you get. Uh, there's also a Serendia card as well that starts at the same time. So if you're on Balanos 1, you can hit the Balanos card. And if you're on Serendia 1, you can hit the Serendia card. The Serendia card goes uh, out the north side of Heidel turns around, comes down, loops down here, comes like around here or something like this, and then it comes across, uh, and then it kind of comes up. I'm not sure the exact path, but then it hits Calpheon like that. It's basically like this, okay? Um, and it's the same concept, but like basically Cho Nation and Digital try to fight each other on one cart, so you just go to the other cart. You don't touch them, Simba. That's the bad place, okay? But yeah, that's that's like a really fun thing. But like Throne and Liberty has this too. It's probably way more fun because it's a golem that can actually fight back.
Castle Owning Guild will assign someone to drive the golem while defending it against the entire server that will contest it in efforts to steal the tax. Next, that's actually way cooler. I think that that would be like I think if the defending guild could like defend the tax card that would be sick so let's talk about the gearing process something that i feel like a lot of people actually don't really know is there karma loss during the cart no no karma loss during the cart but you're flagged for pvp when you hit it about first off gear can be obtained by a rare drop via bosses but is mainly obtained from crafting with that there are three elements to the gearing first is the enhancement level which is your standard plus one plus two this process is the simplest you feed it a specific mat, in this case called a growth stone, and you do it until it hits 100%. There's no chance of failure. Every upgrade is guaranteed. Second is the okay. grade of gear. Blue is superior to green, for example. But purple is the big dick shit, right? If green is the little dick, this is medium penis, and then this is big dick. You can feed your current gear into a new piece of higher grade gear, allowing you to transfer your experience. Third are the traits that come along with your gear. This is where the RNG is. When you craft a piece of gear, you... I was concerned that there wouldn't be any. Thank, thank goodness that there's an... There's an uh, thank goodness there's RNG involved. I was scared for a moment. You'll get an RNG trait. It's just like Destiny 2. It's just like Destiny 2. Destiny 2 has green, blue, and like purple grade and yellow grade stuff. Uh, and like the rare thing or like the traits on each gun are different, right? The perks on each gun are different. And you'll unlock more traits depending on the piece of gear. You will not experience any downgrading or failure when you're actually enhancing your gear. No, you'll just get perks that are bad. And then you just have to go get the entire gun again. I mean, uh, sword again. Instead, you're going to continue to upgrade that gear as much as you can with mats while you grind. And while you're doing that, you're going to also be continuing to farm base pieces to try and find the best trait combination that you can use so that you could feed into your main gear or replace your main gear with. With that understanding, now I think it's time to talk about the monetization and trait. I just, I say this when we watch Canon's video. I just, I gotta, I gotta say it. It's, we know that Canon is one of us. Okay, we, we know that he is a man of culture. All right. Trading. Currently in the K. I also just saw this. We're just gonna, uh, again, one more time. I'm just. That's all I'm saying. Right, moving on now i think it's time to talk about the monetization and trading currently in the kr version there is a cash shop currency called lucent that is available to purchase with real money there's also a leveling growth pack and a very modest pre-order pack but considering these seem to be one-time things it doesn't really matter too much on top of that there's also a monthly battle pass battle pass details are still not yet official but based off of everything i've seen which includes leaks the pass definitely does help with progression speed but not by an insane amount the biggest question mark by far is the auction house which is exclusively traded via premium currency players can obtain this premium currency by selling tradable items on the auction house loot that's obtained from the open world bosses for example will be tradable players will be able to sell these items on the auction house and receive lucent at the end of the day okay so you can literally get pearls basically in game for like trading in game money that's interesting hey, this is a like that's real money to use on the auction house well i mean that's that's going to be inevitable basically um but like really what the, what he's saying is that like you can trade in game items for pearl shop currency for like uh for premium currency for stuff you would normally have to spend money on you don't have to spend any money and you can just sell the in-game items korean mmo an nc soft mmo at that i don't think anyone was expecting this game to be free to play we were all yeah we're all expecting it to be pay to win well. expecting it to be pay to win the question was how pay to win was it going to be i think people were hoping that it won't be every mmo is pay to win that's just the way that it ends up going because like you have to pay for your servers and stuff long term 
overly but they need a way to keep making money predatory i think the big question here is how much lucent will a free-to-play player be able to realistically farm if the auction house ends up being almost impossible to access for a free-to-play player then this game is pretty much dead on arrival in the west unless they change it if players can farm enough lucent then lucent is essentially just gold and the game is allowing you to purchase it just like every other korean mmo like lost ark however with throne there is a particularly larger emphasis on pvp which makes it a lot more sensitive to okay so there is a su substantial amount of pay to win in the game <laughs> Just to be clear, it seems like there is definitely a substantial amount of pay to win. It's just there's a lot more PvP here. Towards pay to win mechanics than a PvE yeah, wow, focused the game. Token, right? My honest thoughts on this is that the game's future lies in the balance of this auction house, at least for the West. The only upside to this system is that free to play players could technically purchase anything in the cash shop since they can farm Correct. premium currency in the game. We're gonna have to just wait and see how big the gaps are or what items are even tradable. Is it just me or does that character model look worse than BDOs? Like, like, look at that. Okay, that one's it's like, like super glare. There we go. Oh no, this is the basic Mewa. Keep in mind, this is the base Mewa. I don't know, man. She's in a shark suit, so it's kind of hard to tell. But like, if you look at the detail on the shark suit, look at the detail on the shark suit. Looks better than BDO, in my opinion. I don't know. Maybe it's... Maybe if I look at my lawn or something. Hold on, let me go look at the... Let me, like, I, th this is kind of glary and stuff. This is like the best... This is the best that there's... Or keep in mind, this is a panning shot in the trailer, which means this is as good as it gets for them, right? Like... I... I don't know, man. BDO, BDO has its grindiness, too. TNL has a lot more physics uh, to the looks. Oh, you mean giddiness. Okay. Looks like the hair is more hair and stuff. I don't know, man. So if I look at my lawn... I don't know, does this look better or worse? That looks better to me. Right? You put these side by side. She looks better. All right, just focus, guys. All right, I'll take the booba out of the picture. All right, I'll, I'll take... Stop, look at... There you go. All right, respectfully. There you go. All right, so... I don't know, he looks blocky, man. His hair, maybe, looks a little bit better. In F3, why are you... Like, why, what, in the Pearl Shop? Like, what, what do you want me to look at it in the Pearl Shop for? Look again, it's the same thing, bro. Compare with Archer? Okay. I guess he does kind of look like Archer, doesn't he? It's glary, but like if you tone down the like, I don't, I don't know, whatever, for whatever reason it looks glary, but like, honestly, I guess they look close to the same. I guess they look pretty, yeah, they look close to the same. They look fine. Yeah, I'd say the graphics are close to similar. The way I see it, the best case scenario for this game is that it stays at Lost Ark levels of pay to win and is able to sustain a player base. Worst case is that it's mo yeah, yeah. mobile levels of pay to win and dies rather quickly. For me, this game has a lot of potential because the general structure and content of the game is there. Everything will depend on how bad the pay to win system is, but to be fair to them, the game has already become a less pay to win since the beta. I mean, contracts literally had a premium currency version that was removed. Most of you guys may not know the significance in that, but if you play this game, you'll understand that that's a massive dump. W. But like I said, we'll just have to play the game and see. Regardless, I'm going to be deep diving and no life in this game come launch time to find. He has been. 
find out so definitely come join me on twitch because i'm going to be live streaming it and i'm going to be leading a, an alliance of english speakers to try and take the castle and beat the koreans at their own game we've got about 200 people or so in our guild and more in our community so if you are looking for an active more positive community that's excited to try thrown out be sure to join our discord otherwise hang out with me on twitch and i'll see you in the next video really well edited honestly did uni do this one too did fake uni do this one it doesn't look like he did this this one was really well edited it looks really good here's the video right here boys go give it a like comment subscribe to him make sure you subscribe to canon he makes amazing stuff he has been playing a lot of throat and liberty i recommend checking it out uh he does live in korea so like it's easy for him throne and liberty looks pretty good Throne and Liberty looks pretty good. Oh my god, dude. What What is this thumbnail? Oh, this shameless thumbnail, bro. What's going on with that, dude? Um, Throne and Liberty definitely looks pretty solid. Um, I probably will play it when it comes to the West. Uh, I think it has enough PvP elements that, like... It looks solid enough that um, I could really enjoy it. But, like, I don't really personally care about pay-to-win too much as long as it's not over the line. You know what I mean? There's, like, a line of acceptable pay-to-win. Usually, what I accept is, like, reasonable pay-to-win numbers are, like, 40 to $50 an hour. If I can spend $50 or grind for an hour, I'm going to grind for an hour. I think that's a reasonable line of pay-to-win, right? Like, in terms of dollars per hour. Like, in-game spent. You know what I mean? I don't mind pay-to-win that's kind of over that, like, across that line in terms of, like, it's all, okay, you got to spend $70 to get one hour of gameplay time. Like, oh, okay, well, that's probably fine. That's not the end of the world. There's always going to be people that throw money at the game uh, to do better.